You are an internet user, and as an internet user, you connect to things. So you sit down and you maybe connect and watch your favorite movie online, or you play a video game, or you do a FaceTime or a video call with a friend, whatever it might be. And sometimes this is referred to as connecting to the cloud, as the internet is lots of who knows what on earth going on where there's connections going in and out like this. Well, first things first, I hate to be the bearer of bad news if you did not know this, but the cloud does not actually exist. And when I say that, I mean the cloud is really just a whole bunch of actual computers somewhere else in the world. A cloud computer isn't really a cloud computer. It's really just someone else's computer. So AWS is a cloud service, GCP, Azure, right? They have cloud computers available. But AWS actually has real computers in their data centers in Ohio, in Virginia, in Oregon, and so on. So the cloud is actual computers that just don't belong to you. As a quick for instance, I'll get rid of the X here because the cloud actually does exist. It's just not something in the ether or a mist off one of the moons of Jupiter. It's it's just real computers. If, if you're drinking, say, a Coke and someone takes the Coke from you, it has just become a cloud Coke. Okay? Kind of a silly illustration, but just want to put things in perspective. So the internet, rather than looking like this, in fact, looks more like this where you've got computer talking to computer and these are talking to each other and you add another one and you slowly start building a mesh and it gets messier and messier and messier right there isn't in fact some absurd cloud that's talking internally to itself with its own consciousness it's just a network of computers that are talking to each other all right so i'm going to get rid of this here and what's actually getting passed around are called packets, little streams of data, okay? And that is happening anytime you sit down and you type in a URL into a browser, or you go to Netflix, or you're watching a soccer game online or something like that. Data is getting passed back and forth between some kind of server and your client machine, which is probably a browser, but it might be something else, maybe a console or something like that, and that data is in the form of packets, okay? The question is, why are we talking about this, or why do I bring this up? Well, as of the making of this video, whether you've used Socket.io before or not, you are now in charge of handling this part which means you are now responsible for someone showing up and asking for data. So you are responsible for handling a request for some data. You're ingesting some data, these packets, you're going to handle them, and then you're going to handle the response. You're going to be responding with data packets. So can you deal with this without knowing this? Of course you can. Who handles most of this? Well, the good news is, Node has done pretty much all the heavy lifting, which is to say, when Google made the V8 engine and put it inside Chrome, they handled pretty much all of this in, in low-level C, right? Almost everything is, is handled for you, and then it's handed off to Socket.io, the rest of the work. So you don't have to know this in order to be able to actually accomplish it, okay? But it will help immensely for you to have exposure to it and to be able to talk intelligibly about it. And when you include the HTTP module or when you start using sockets or when someone starts maybe mentioning some a little bit of network uh, speak or you start talking about bandwidth or latency, you will have at least a very, very basic knowledge. So the goal here is going to be to, to do a very brief overview of the networking protocols that are involved in the networking stack because Socket.io is all about networking and you are a Socket.io developer. So over here on the left, we've got the packet and there are five basic layers in the structure of every packet. Okay, starting from the bottom, there is the physical layer. Okay, above that we have the link layer. Above that we have the network layer, it's sometimes called the internet layer. 
the next layer is called the transport layer. That's what we're going to be talking about uh, right now. And above that is the application layer. And I'll give you examples for each of these. Okay? This, these are the layers that make up a packet. As data passes back and forth between server and client, you don't need to know exactly how they interact with each other or how they work. You just need to know that they all exist. Okay? Let me give you some examples. So for the physical layer, that's going to be the cables. Okay? The actual physical cables that are connecting stuff together. Link is going to be things like your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet connection, whatever whatever it might be. All right. Now, when we're actually as developers are going to get involved, because so far these are these are hardware levels, the network is going to be IP, and the transport layer is going to be either UDP or TCP. And if if these look familiar, these two go together very closely. Uh, the transport layer plus the network layer together form what's called the Internet Protocol Suite, or TCP slash IP. You may have heard of that before. Okay? The top layer, the application layer, is the layer that we are going to be working with as developers most of the time, and that is your good friend HTTP. You may have also used FTP before. If you use a Linux machine, that also uses SSH. There's SMTP, which is mail protocol, and so on. So these are all different protocols used in the various network layers. Okay, so again, as developers, we are going to be interested primarily in these pieces. Specifically, application is going to be where we're going to be spending most of our time, at least usually, the web sockets use TCP, so we're going to be going back and forth between HTTP and TCP a lot. HTTP uses TCP as its transport layer. We will get to the nuances with how they work together later on, but it's important to set a frame of reference for how TCP and UDP works before we go any farther. You have a computer with some kind of internet connection. Okay, The transport layer creates 2 to the 16th ports on your computer, or roughly 65,000. Whenever you start a node app, for instance, and maybe you start your node app on port 3000, the reason you have that 3000 is you're using one of the 65,000 ports the transport layer creates. If you started an app on port 5000, like a Flask app or a Rails app or something like that, again, you're using one of those ports. If you're not familiar with ports, you can think about your network connection as like maybe being a hotel. A hotel is a single building, but it has a ton of individual rooms. They're all numbered. If someone comes to the hotel, in order to find a guest, they need to know the room number. And with the room number, they can actually find who they're looking for. So what will usually happen is an application of a given machine will issue a network request. Let's say it's an HTTP request, and it will originate from port 49742. I just made that up. right? It's an arbitrary port out of the 65,000 ports. And let's say it wants to talk to port 80 on another computer. That request will get handed off to the transport layer, and that will get wrapped up in what's called a segment. Okay, And inside of the segment, there'll be metadata and it will have the destination port, and we are interested in port 80, and it will have the source port, which in this case is going to be 49742. The transport layer will hand that off the network layer for further processing. When it gets to the receiving machine, it'll go through the process in reverse and eventually find the right port. All right, there are two different types of transport layer protocols. As I mentioned, there's UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. I had to look that up. I could not, for the life of me, remember what it meant. And it has a couple advantages. Now, this is just extra information because HTTP is based on the other one, as are WebSockets and Socket.io. But it's helpful to know this so that you know why HTTP uses TCP. UDP is incredibly lightweight. And that might seem like a really big win. Why doesn't HTTP use that? Well, we'll get to that. Uh, when I say it's lightweight, it's only 8 bytes for a header. So it's really, really tiny. UDP requires very, very little overhead. Okay, It's also 
connectionless. And when I say it's connectionless, what I mean is when you want to send data, so let's say you have a client here, and over here you have some sort of server, and it's this client wants to talk to this server, you don't have to create a connection first, you can just start talking. And even if the other computer doesn't want to hear from you, that's okay, you don't have to wait for the connection to be established, you can just start going. So that's that can be a big advantage whenever you're ready to start talking, just boom, start sending data. There's also a consistency that you can count on. And this is a little bit uh, difficult to describe because it, it, it can be taken either way. Um, UDP will send data no matter what. That might be seen as a very good thing, but it can in fact be a very, very troubling thing or frustrating thing, right? What happens if there's packet loss, okay? UDP does not care. It will keep right on sending packets. It doesn't make any difference. What if the network is very, very congested? It doesn't care. It will just keep right on sending packets and just making the network congested. What happens if the packets are out of order? It doesn't care. It's not UDP's problem. They're going to show up out of order. That will be the other side's problem, okay? So those are all bad, but what's the big win here? The win is that UDP is very, very fast. It's very lightweight. Like I said, the headers are incredibly small. You don't have to bother set up a connection to start. You just start sending data. It's consistent. At least it's consistent in the way that it sends data. It's going to always send data the same way. If packets get sent out of order, it's no big deal. It will just keep sending data. You can count on it always acting the same. So UDP is nice for those reasons. It's used primarily for things like maybe video games or real-time communication. Everyone has had an experience with one of those where let's say you're playing a, a, a real-time strategy game or League of Legends or World of Warcraft and you're playing and suddenly your character seems to move back in time five seconds. That's UDP has been, back over here on the right, has been sending data over just screaming and the data hasn't been getting to the server. And suddenly the server updates your machine with, oh... Uh, I guess I'm actually way behind. I'm going to start sending some different data. Or if you've been doing a video chat on, say, FaceTime or Skype or Google Chat or whatever, the same thing where you're talking and it looks like everything's normal, and then all of a sudden the video chat catches up and you're seeing live a live feed again. Same thing, okay? So that's how UDP works. It's a big win because it's fast, but it's also incredibly unreliable. Don't despair, Socket.io is not based on UDP, so it doesn't suffer from these faults. Okay, the other option is TCP. And TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. And TCP, as opposed to being connectionless, is actually connection-based. And when I say connection-based, I mean unlike UDP, if you are a client and you sit down and you want to start talking to a computer via TCP... You don't just start screaming, you actually go through what's called a three-way handshake because before you're going to actually transmit any data, you have to initiate a connection. So the three-way handshake goes, the, the client says, hey, I'd like to talk, right? That's one. The server says yes or no, right? Hopefully says yes, that's no problem. I'm happy to set up a connection. And then the actual data starts going. So those are the three steps that will happen before a TCP connection uh, actually goes through, okay? So the upshot here is that it's incredibly reliable. One, because you actually know that the connection is going gonna, is gonna to happen. In the case of UDP, like we had before, UDP is just going to start screaming. There might not even be anybody there. The server might actually disappear before the message gets there, or the server might actually refuse the messages for some reason, okay? It also have has delivery acknowledgments, which just means every time data comes through, the server on the right-hand side over here will let the client know over here that I got your data and vice versa. So TCP is very reliable because you can count on the data coming through because you actually get acknowledgments that the data was received. There's also retransmission of data. Okay, with UDP, if data doesn't get received, for one thing, UDP may not even know that whether it was received or not because there isn't data acknowledgement. In a TCP connection, if the data isn't received, the server 
can let the client know I didn't get something and then the client can send it again. So we have retransmission, which is a, a very, very nice feature. We can also guarantee that we get in order packets. And this, this is something I briefly passed over with UDP, but if the packets, the data may not come through in the right order. So you may have packet loss, but if the packets don't even come through in the right order, things may be jar garbled up. With TCP, you can guarantee that the packets arrive in the correct order, regardless of what happens with the network. Okay. One other thing in TCP that happens is you also have congestion control so that if the network is overwhelmed, uh, let's say you're at a, at a concert or a sporting event or something where the network is totally overwhelmed, you're trying to connect to something, TCP may intentionally introduce latency to try and keep packet loss to a minimum so that it doesn't have to make the problem even worse. All right. That might seem like an obnoxious thing, but in the end, the goal is to try and make things uh, make things even better. Okay, what are the wins? Well, TCP versus UDP. Anything that needs to be reliable is good for TCP. Anything that needs to be fast and can be unreliable usually goes with UDP. So things for UDP will be things like gaming or, again, live communication, things that you want it to feel like a live experience and you do not ever want to introduce latency. For TCP, in our case, we absolutely need HTTP as well as socket IO to use TCP because we need all of the reliability that TCP has to offer. If we are going to send an image or if we're going to send a web page across the internet to a user, we can't have the, the packets showing up in a different order or the HTML will show up in completely the wrong order or the CSS will show up in completely jarbled format and they'll get a bunch of gibberish, right? If you sent something like, hello, Rob, and that's your message, right? It, it's guaranteed to show up that way on TCP. On UDP, it might show up R O H E comma O L L or something like that, right? However, it ends up working. UDP cannot guarantee that it's going to end up in order, and we cannot have something like that happening. This is a very, very fast overview of how of networking protocols. What do you need to know? What you need to know right now is that TCP and IP together get two computers ready to talk to each other, and that's all you need to know. They create an environment that will allow two machines to talk to each other, okay? If you want another nugget, the other piece would be that TCP is the transport layer and is used instead of UDP for HTTP because it is reliable and UDP is not. Okay, in the next video, we're going to go a little bit deeper into TCP and why Socket.io uses it and, and a little bit deeper into each of the layers. We'll see you there.